Today we'll be looking at laser guided rockets and bombs. We'll be making use of the WMD7 targeting pod. If you're not already familiar with it, you should start with my video covering the targeting pod's usage in detail first as it is required. You can find it linked on screen or in the description. And as a small correction to that video, SPI is in fact sensor point of interest. Sometimes it's the small things you forget. We'll cover an introduction to weapons page, programming and autopilot, laser guided rockets, laser guided bombs and setting them up, all tools very useful for using the same weapons. We can mount BRM1 90mm laser guided rocket pods containing 16 per pod or GBU12 on a single pylon or double mount, GBU16 or GBU10 each having a progressively larger warhead. Before we take off, we may wish to configure our laser code for our weapons. By default, they are configured to 1688. As you can see, we have four GBU 12s loaded on pylons 2 and 6. To change it, select Ground Crew, Update Laser Code, select your pylon with Choose Pylon, and we'll start with the left outer. Press Change All. The first one in our laser code is not changeable, so we start with the hundreds. We'll set 5 our tens which will be six and our units seven. We will then repeat the process with our right outer pylon. Once we're done setting codes we simply press setting complete. We should then see the laser code updated on our SMS page. So let's get on to setting up our stores. We can select our stores page by pressing the quick access SMS button on the left MFCD or the menu button from the bottom center and then you can pick the SMS button from above on any other display. Alternatively, if we enter air to ground master mode with T1 backwards, the stores page will automatically open up on our left MFCD. Here we can see the wing form with our loaded weapons. In the center, we can see the number of internal gun rounds we have. Under each pylon number, we'll see what is loaded. In the center of the display, we've got our weapons programming options. Our set station is shown boxed. Below each station we can see our weapon status, either standby or arm. We can cycle our selected weapon type with the S8 change weapon switch, or by pressing the S5 nose wheel steering button we will cycle our selected station. We can press the weapon selection from the programming display and pick a weapon as well. In the top left we can see our selected weapons profile, pressing this will display the various profiles we have available for each and every loaded weapon on our aircraft. Any changes you make are automatically saved to the selected profile. Let's start with the BRM-1 laser guided rocket. With the BRM-1 we only have a couple programming options. Release mode. For BRM-1s we only have direct mode available. This is aimed directly at our SPI. Release quantity. This is the number of rockets you wish to fire per press of the S3 weapons launch button. For this we'll select either 1 or 2. Doing so will also switch us to salvo mode, making us fire rockets in pairs. Fuse allows us to set safe or electronic fuse. If you want the weapon to go boom, pick E-fuse. BR alt, this is the break off altitude. If we fly below this altitude we will see the break X cue appear on our HUD. This is intended to ensure the aircraft is not caught in the fragmentation blast of our own weapons. But this can also be set from 0 to 9999 feet as desired and is measured with our radar altimeter. Lastly we can see the laser code of our weapon on the top right. This can be configured only on the ground. For typical BRM-1 employment we want to use direct mode, quantity 1 and E-fuse armed. Next we'll go over setting up our laser guided bombs. We've got a little more to pick from this time. We can pick our release mode, either auto, CCIP or DTOS. Only auto and CCIP modes are implemented at this time. With auto we'll use our SPI as the aiming point and the HUD cues will guide us to that point to help us drop in level flight. CCIP, constantly computed impact point, will display on our HUD the predicted impact point on the ground. You'll only ever use this in a dive attack and it's typically reserved for unguided weapons only. Quantity, this allows you to select how many bombs you wish to drop per weapons release. Up to four can be selected if you're doing double mount stations. With more than one selected we can configure the interval which is the spacing between each bomb impact in feet. Functionally on laser guided bombs however it will only give us a delay between releases as I home in on the same target spot. Next we have our fuse allowing us safe, nose, tail or nose and tail. 
Pick nose for impact detonation, tail for penetration detonation, used against buildings and forested areas, and nose and tail for redundancy to mitigate the risk of a fuse failure. Lastly, we have our weapons laser code. Remember this is configured on the ground by the ground crew and cannot be changed in flight. For a typical GBU employment, we want to use auto mode, quantity 1, and nose and tail fuse. So let's get into using our weapons. First, we'll need to find a target. I recommend using autopilot to set yourself up in an orbit if you have to search for a target. This can be done by angling our aircraft in the direction we wish to orbit, and on the upfront control panel pressing the AP button, and then the arrow to swap to altitude hold. This will hold our current altitude shown on the display. We can also enter a desired barometric altitude by selecting the arrow beside it and entering our target. 2500. Zero, zero. Note that an extra zero is implied on the end of the display. This will set our aircraft to 25,000 feet. It will then automatically climb or descend to maintain this level for us. Now we won't fly into the ground whilst heads down trying to find our target. Remember your pod's laser must match your selected weapon's code. We should also ensure our targeting pod page is set to soy, otherwise the laser will not automatically fire for us. We'll start with laser guided rockets. Once you've picked out your next customer, turn on to target. The cues on your HUD can help you find the target, following the diamond indicating a designated point, and the left to right steering cues. The BRM1 is pretty simple point and shoot. The circle on our HUD shows us the zone our target needs to be within in order to fire the missile and acquire the target. Put our target diamond within this and ideally center it. Then when we reach within 4.3 nautical miles of the target, we're in range to fire, and you'll see the in-range cue appear. Then, release your weapon and turn away. Ensure you maintain a good view on the target with the typing pod at all the way to impact, and that the laser is firing once you release. You can also hit two targets in a single pass, provided they are close together. If you launch, Wait a few seconds, launch a second, and then as soon as the first impacts, quickly slew to our second target. This can be a little complicated and prone to making errors if you're in a hurry. A final note, the BRM-1 is a laser spot tracking rocket, but due to an engine limitation with rotating weapons, it functions like a beam riding missile. This means it is not possible to buddy laser for someone else's rocket, and it has to be guided by the aircraft that launched it. This should change at a later point in early access. Next up we've got laser guided bombs. Again, find yourself a target, we need to ensure we are a good distance away from the target to start our run-in, and to allow us time to turn and align ourselves. In addition to the same cues on our HUD, we have the bomb full line. We want to center this on our HUD and stabilize it there. It is best to perform an auto drop in level flight. Fly towards your target and maintain a centered bomb full line. You don't need to be completely exact, but keep it close. As we get close to the release, a square will start moving down the bomb full line. Shortly before the release window, you will hear a two second tone. When the square reaches our flight path marker, press the weapon release button. Check your targeting pod display, and ensure that the laser is in fact firing. You will also now see the predicted time in seconds until impact. Maintain a view on target all the way until the bomb hits. I would recommend turning away left or right after weapons release to avoid flying directly over your target as the pod will sometimes struggle and briefly lose track as it transitions from looking directly downwards to looking backwards. This might throw off your laser guidance. Laser guided bombs work best from high altitude and above the reach of AAA or IR and short range SAMs, packing a heavy punch, whilst the BRM-1 rockets having a shorter range will force you closer to the target, putting you at greater risk, but they do allow you to carry 16 of them on a single pylon. Be sure to hit the rear and sides of armoured vehicles if you can. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.